if the world is safe today, you can thank a mum. Yes, mums. I mean, who else would tell us to take our vitamin C tablets? Who else knows the recipe for chili chicken? Who else thinks that it's necessary to put mayonnaise in the fridge? We all should, but mums do. And mums safety records really do leave the safety records of dads in the dust. We dads don't notice the fruit flies over the garbage can. We don't mind the dog licking the pacifier. Why wash the dishes if you're going to use them in a few hours? Yes, <clears throat> we hear it all the time. Tidy your bed, put things back in order, wash your hands. Mums are God's security system. Yes, it's mum who makes home a haven, a safe place. The hands of a mum are thermometer sensitive. Her eyes can see through bathroom doors. Her nose can detect dirty socks two bedrooms away. Her mouth speaks the vernacular of motherhood. Insightful warnings like cover your mouth when you speak, sneeze, sorry. If your friends eat glass, would you eat it too? When we think of protection, we think of mums, don't we? God did. Eight centuries before the birth of Jesus, the children of Israel living in Jerusalem were under attack. The people were desperate, saying, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. They were afraid. All that they saw was enemies encircling them. And they thought God had forgotten them. And God answered their fears by pointing them, pointing them of all places to the nursery, to the Hebrew nursery. Were their fears well-founded? Had God forgotten them? I'm happy to point you to a beautiful promise in Scripture, which I'm sure most of you have come across before. <clears throat> but maybe you haven't looked at it very closely. Isaiah chapter 49, verses 15 and 16. Permit me to read them again. <clears throat> Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she bore? And though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. See, your walls, speaking of Jerusalem, are ever, ever before me. Perhaps someone listening today, you need this assurance. Perhaps you have wondered if God has forsaken you or forgotten you. Perhaps you can identify with this feeling, the deepest panic that God has abandoned me. Can there be any deeper fear or fundamental anxiety that, than God forsaking you? You know, in our group, I know at least two people who are lying in hospital beds right now. There may be others. And uh, they're looking to God and they're hoping and praying that God has not forgotten them. Of course, God has not forgotten them. God has not forgotten any of us. 
Sometimes we can panic like the Jews did. You know, disaster rode into Jerusalem in the form of the Babylonian army. City walls were broken down. The temple was destroyed. And the brightest and best youth ha had been marched off to a distant land. And the people who were left behind worried that God had forsaken them. Maybe you feel the same. Maybe you have felt the same. Maybe one day you will feel the same. You know, midnight moments in a hospital bed. The monitor beeps. The IV drips. And you can hear the nurses chattering in the hallway. You can't sleep. You just stare at the ceiling, at the wall. And you wonder, has God forgotten me? Or maybe you've been hunting for a job, a good job, for a long time. And you're thinking, has God forgotten me? Or maybe you've pleaded with God for a baby, for a child. And as the years go by, you wonder, is God near? Has he forgotten me? Are you acquainted with such panic? Are you acquainted with such anxiety? I know all of us are. We are human beings. Anyway, God has a word for all of us. God has a word for you. And he gives you the most beautiful of all pictures in answer to your question. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she bore? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. You need a picture of my protection? God says, go to the nearest nursery, slip in quietly and watch the mother as she cradles the infant. Could God have given us a greater, more poignant, more powerful picture than this one on earth? Think about the mum in that moment. What's her highest priority? Her priority is the protection of that baby, the nourishment, the provision of that baby. She has one and only one priority, and that is that baby. God says, that's my devotion to you, my priority. Think of the infant. Is he cold? The mother holds him close to her. The baby is no longer crying. He or she is safe, warm and content. He is being fed. Don't we long for such a place, a safe place? Could there be a better place for that infant than the arms of the mother? And God's question here is simple and straightforward. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she bore? How would you answer that question from God? Seems to me a ridiculous question at first sight. Can you imagine or even conjure up in your mind the idea of a mother feeding her baby and saying, now, who are you? What are you doing here? Somebody tell me who this baby is. Can a mother forget her baby? Can a mother have no compassion on the child she bore? Even if the mother is unwell, even if the mother is weary, even if the parents are unprepared, the mother will always, yes, always, have the most loyal, the most devoted, 
even bias devotion to that child? Can a mother have no compassion? Never. But God says, even in some unimaginable circumstances, the mother forgot the child or had no compassion. Then God says, though she may forget, I will not forget you. My brother, my sister, will you receive this word even as you are listening right now? God has not forgotten you. He never, ever will. And the answer and the proof is in this, the greatest pledge. Notice what God says. See, I have engraved you. Not just your name, but your life, your whole story. I've engraved it on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Your walls have collapsed, but I can see them. Your life is a challenge, maybe broken, but I can see you. Your name is not engraved in some heavenly file. God never glances at your name tag to jog his memory of you. No, the Bible is very clear. He knew you before you were born. He knows the day that you will die. He has measured the span of your life and he has chosen you and invited you to come and spend forever with him. Your life is written in the palm of his hand. Your story is ever in the eyesight of God. Maybe you thought he forgot you. Because, because we think God is like us. We so often forget him. No, from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible promises that he will never forget you. He will never forsake you. Even though we do forget him and even forsake him, our love does not make him love us more. Yes, our love does not make him love us more. Our failure to love him does not make him love us less. His love does not depend upon us or our love. He loves simply because he is love. God alone is love. You have never, ever lived one unloved day in your entire life so far, and you never will. Such is the love of God. Maybe a family member, a member of your family, your spouse, maybe a friend promised to love you, but let you down. But please, let's not filter God's love through earthly experience, a mistake that we often make. Let us not filter the love of a perfect God through earthly experience. Let God be God. Regarding our loyalty and our trust, yes, there are questions, many questions. Sometimes I wonder if a baby being nursed by the mother would ever have the same questions, the same insecurities that we have regarding God. I mean, can you imagine a child in its mother's arms having thoughts like, well, I hope she doesn't drop me. I hope she doesn't change her mind. 
I cried so much last night. I'm not sure she's really going to feed me today. Babies don't have those kind of thoughts, do they? But we do, don't we? We worry about disappointing God, about out his grace. We worry that we won't deserve a place in his arms, that he might forget us or forsake us or drop us. You know, think back to the, to the former times. Do you remember when you first came to Christ? Those wonderful days. Remember how you came with childlike faith? Maybe you just said a prayer. Maybe you just cried out to him like a child would cry out to her mother. And he accepted you. He forgave you. And then as the years pass, sometimes we change. We lose that childlike faith. Maybe we slip and fall. We struggle. We struggle with pride. We struggle with guilt. We struggle with temptation. We struggle with all sorts of things. But God calls us all. And his message is very clear. You are never so bad. You are never so big that you can't be held by the everlasting arms of your heavenly Father. Paul says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Maintain that childlike posture, because God's love for you, for you has not changed. Another verse from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 10. For the mountains may move and the hills disappear, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant promise of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord who has mercy on you. I recently read an account of what happened on board a domestic flight between two major cities. The plane was about to take off. Most everybody was busy with their mobile phones, laptops, some had a few books, but there was one exception. There was a mom and her four-year-old daughter. While everybody else on the plane was busy looking at their screens or books, she and her daughter pulled out her coloring book and pens. They chose the, to pass the time to engage in playtime. Everybody assumed, of course, that it, it would be an uneventful flight. But just a few minutes into the flight, a few thousand feet in the air, it became obvious that that was not the case. The plane jerked to the right, then the plane jerked to the left, and then the captain came over the intercom saying, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have a problem with our hydraulic system. We're not sure if we can get our landing gear down. We have to return to the airport. Please prepare yourselves for a bumpy landing. Fear took over the interior of that plane, people turned ashen with anxiety. Several passengers lost their composure, but not the mom. According to a businessman who was seated just across the aisle 
from her who later wrote this story he overheard the mother's voice a calm reassuring mother's voice as she turned to the four year old and said you know you are my special girl and i love you and i'm so proud of you you know that right yes mummy said the girl then the mom said sometimes things happen that are not our fault but whatever happens always remember you have a mum who loves you and then the mum did a most surprising thing something quite unexpected she reached over and she unbuckled the seat belt that her daughter was wearing and she extended it then she unbuckled her own seat belt she stood up stepped over her daughter and very carefully placed herself in her 4 year old daughter's lap she sat on her daughter's lap and then put that one seat belt around them both as if to say if any harm comes to this child it has to first pass through me well the landing gear reengaged there was no crisis there was no air crash and they landed safely that little girl must have that memory deeply deposited in her conscious existence that she has a mum who would die for her she has a mum who would die for her i ask you what word would you use to describe that kind of love what word would completely fully describe this kind of love when you come up with that word please apply it to all mums and then and then apply it to our heavenly father the one who has engraved your name on the palm of his hands your life is right there in the palm of his hands right next to the wound the scar from the cross and the nails he died for you he covered you and he received upon his own body the punishment of your sin and my sin so that he could leave that door to heaven wide open for you for me for every single person on this planet the love of god is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell it goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell the guilty pair bowed down with care god gave his son to win his erring child he reconciled and pardoned them from his sin the love of god the love of god most amazing most remarkable let's respond to the love of god amen